Frank Clark is back. The Seahawks had to make a move, George, and they did. They're bringing back Frank Clark. Unfortunately, Chenna Nawasu is out for the season. But this is what the Seahawks do. They make moves. Yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing. I mean, I, look, I'm not trying to be a party pooper here. We downgraded. I mean, Nawasu out, Clark in. It's a downgrade overall right now where Frank Clark is in his career. But it's a move you had to make. You had to replace it an injury you had to bring in someone and you had to bring someone who's at least competent and above competent so like overall yes the move was absolutely needed but i think it kind of puts us in the same maybe like two percent worse than we were with lots you're listening to the sports on tap seattle podcast i'm sammy and with me as always is my older brother george your favorite place to be a fan of seattle sports now let's get this party started. Gino, are you ready? I got ready, you're ready! I actually tend to disagree with that slightly because I think that if Frank Clark can be sort of 10% better than he was last year, and sometimes that happens when you're mm -hmm. in specific schemes or specific defenses, um, then it could almost equal out to the same thing. But it all just depends on how they use him as well. True. I think at the end of the day with this defense, they're playing so well that I think a lot of people can fit, like, plug and play because the way the corners are playing, the way the secondary is playing, we have a lot of options to make other things work. So I think it's I think it's more of a – I would agree with you that at this exact moment, it could probably be considered a slight downgrade. But at the same time, for it being an injury replacement – that's a really good saving spot compared to what most people get for injury replacements, right? Like most people, if you lose a, a, a offensive lineman, a running back, a quarterback, a defensive end, you usually don't get off of free agency, like a, a added, close enough. Yeah, yeah. A replacement that is about the same level as yeah. the one you lost. No, or no, no, even slightly don't... below, like yeah. you said, but it's like a really good replacement piece for losing a big piece on your defense. Like usually it's like, nowhere near that level yeah and he's also not played much this year which is pro maybe a good thing that he's like super duper fresh so maybe he is a above replacement value if we're gonna like let's pretend it's baseball it's a war right yeah wins above replacement maybe with his fresh legs his wins above replacement in the nfl is better i mean i i don't know completely what we're gonna get out of frank clark but i mean is it cool absolutely is it nice seeing the one thing i'd like to say about this organization in general it seems like it doesn't matter who it is they're able to always bring back old players because of how good the organization is so it just i i think the biggest take i will get out of this is we saw bobby wagner leave he came back we saw kj wright leave he comes back we see frank clark leave he comes back um i'm sure jaron I'm reed jaron reed another uh, guy on the defensive line yeah. last time frank clark and jaron reed were together it was a very Good defense. <laughs> right. Um, but in general, like I feel like that just goes to show what Pete Carroll and John Schneider are running as an organization that people love to be in. I mean, let's just You're take missing a, a lot, by the way. I just wanted to add. What, like uh, Bruce Irvin, like literally like yeah, last Bruce, year. Year. Marshawn Lynch, like two years ago, I remember came back yeah. for that like couple games. Oh, run. yeah, yeah. Everybody there's been actually like an ex extensive list of people. Except probably Russell Wilson. He will not be coming back right. to this organization. I don't and everybody believe. comes back to like like the off seasons. Like Richard Sherman was there all – like Cliff mm -hmm. Averill's there all the time. Uh, KJ Wright's in Seattle always mm -hmm. showing up to things. Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Kurz, uh, all the – like list off all the dudes. Cam Chancellor's always there. Everybody's always on sidelines at games or at practices. So it is a good testament to the organization. Um other than Russell Wilson, he's probably not going to be back. Yeah. Much. So with that, with that, so I wouldn't say like compared to other organizations and why they're not doing well at this point. Let's look at the New England Patriots, who, by the way, it turns out Bill Belichick did sign a three-year extension, which I was kind of surprised about. But like the, I keep saying the grumpy old coach doesn't work, and Pete Carroll being that coach who has the energy and has the ability to you know, really connect with the players despite being way older and being the oldest coach in the NFL is a really huge testament to how he's running his organization, him and John Schneider. And it makes me proud to be – like it, it is. You're, like, proud to be a Seahawks fan. It makes you feel proud that the organization is run the way it is. 
Yeah, I agree. Sorry, I'm just working on some lighting. Oh, no worries. I really <laughs> didn't really like the lighting that was going on, but it's good enough. Um, I think that at the end of the day, the <laughs> yeah, this is positive. I think. <laughs> okay, I we're going to pause. Yeah, we're no, no, we're going to have to pause. So, someone we know, aka our mother, just came to our window and said, "What's up?" Mm-hmm. So, um. God bless her, but I don't think she knows what we're doing. Yeah. No, she doesn't. God bless her, bro. What, what were you asking? I wasn't asking anything. I was saying I'm just proud to be – they make me proud to be a fan of this organization. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. Uh, players love to come back, and the coaches obviously keep good relationship with their players as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like on a both sides type of thing. At the end of the day, overall, Frank Clark coming back is just – good for this defense for all the reasons we mentioned for camaraderie for not for being a decent replacement for a great player on your defense um for a veteran that understands this coaching staff or this system all of it and a veteran that's good for young people right like um it's good to have a super bowl champ really good nfl player you know being around your organization so they obviously believe in him. He believes in the Seahawks. And I think it's just really exciting to see. I, I I thought from day one it was if it wasn't a big trade for somebody like they've they're saying Brian Burns is available, Chase Young's available. Chase Young was on like the Seahawks trade rumors, internet right. stuff for all offseason. And who knows we could still I mean come to if if something comes up. Right. Yeah, the Seahawks <laughs> do that too. And I think well, I'll say two things. One, I was gonna say it's gonna be I was pretty sure it was going to be Frank Clark or Carlos Dunlap because mm-hmm. they've both been in the system recently <laughs> and they're both free agents and they're both not as good as Nawasu at this exact moment, but they're both probably like, like we said, uh, what was the baseball term war, no. like wins above replacement will probably be decently similar based on the fact that they know the system they've been here. And it's not like the, we're not going from like an all pro to like a no name. We're going exactly. from like a borderline pro bowler to like another borderline pro exactly and the part two i was going to say is outside of just the testament to the organization for always keeping good ties and good relationships i'll say the most important part here is that the seahawks are always willing to do whatever it takes to win and i think that's something we should really appreciate uh coming from a situation in seattle where we don't have an nba team because our owners didn't do what it takes to keep the team in seattle coming from seattle where you're mariners fan and the owners do not do what it takes to win championships they do what it takes to produce profit and revenue uh being a fan of the seahawks is a nice feeling they they will go make a splashy trade for percy harvin even if it didn't work out that well, it made a huge play in the Super Bowl. We won a Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, I'm saying yeah, like I know. Percy Harvin's specifically. Everyone, yeah, yeah. everyone always uses that argument. Like we won the Super Bowl. I'm like, okay, but Percy Harvin, like specifically, outside of those plays in the Super Bowl, if you put it in like a whole spectrum, it wasn't like the best win, but it did win because we won a Super Bowl. Jamal Adams, he's gotten hurt here and there, yes, but we didn't win a Super Bowl. Yeah, we didn't win a Super Bowl, <laughs> but we we did give away a lot of pieces. But yeah. they're trying to make the moves to help this team win. They go and get people like Quandre Diggs. They go and get Draymond Jones. They trade away Russell Wilson when most people think that might be crazy. They actually were seeing what was best for the franchise moving mm-hmm. forward, not just what's best for the quarterback or right now or, or today. jersey sales. Yeah, or jerseys. Yeah, or what fan support. They were actually thinking about how do we win football games. Um, and so it's a really nice thing to have because there's a lot of teams that would lose a guy in this situation and just say, obviously you find a replacement, but they wouldn't try to make a replacement that makes the fans happy even or or makes a decent splash. I feel like they always find a way to make – it's like the opposite of Mariners Twitter. They're always like satisfying what the people on Twitter are saying, which could be a bad thing too. Yeah, but, I was going to say. But no, but I don't, no I'm it, not it's not a bad thing. We're literally the, a top five organization. No, but football. you know what? No, I, I, I'm going to disagree with that part that it's not bad. I just think that – I actually think Seahawks fans are actually pretty savvy. I, I'm not saying – like, if we were bad fans that didn't really understand what we needed as an organization, I actually think, like, it's bad to listen to the fans. The fans usually don't really have a good grip on things. But I actually think Seahawks fans are pretty – pretty plugged in for the most part. Uh, I think this is a rare situation where the fans actually get it right more often than get it wrong. They like actually know what the team needs, not in a way that we're smarter than the team, but like no, actually no. like people actually care a lot mm-hmm. and study and like, yeah, I think we're, I think we're plugged in plugs. fans. Yeah. And honestly, I think like this is such a, 
I, I don't know how we got to this conversation. I think the reason they're plugged in is we have guys like Brock Heward in the morning that fans listen to who's actually a very, very smart football guy and actually really knows what he's saying. So I think they're actually very well-informed fans from the media they consume. And the media they consume, like the Sports on Tap Seattle, which is a great place to consume all your content. Like and subscribe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, but I was really bent about Brock Heward. But no, that's why I think we are good like fans. Yeah, and you have guys like KJ right now doing right. a lot of like film breakdown of G. Scott and like doing different things that are like very beneficial to the organization and fans, right? Like right. understanding what's happening. Uh, I think it's just a rare circumstance. It is. So I don't think all organizations, fans know exactly. Like, don't that. listen to cowboy fans. Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Absolutely. I'm serious. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we are plugged in. Things are good. Uh, Seattle fans are actually quite knowledgeable. There's obviously. Sometimes we overreact because we're fans. The ob- that's the obvious difference mm-hmm. compared to the organization and being a fan is we overreact. They don't. And uh, I love this move. Uh, simply, too. I just love that we made a move for Frank Clark, George, uh, because like, you know, this is just full circle is we found a way to take a bad injury for our team to make it less bad. And not every team does that. I know right. every team tries, not every team actually tries, makes a move outside the organization to bring somebody in that's actually going to be worth it and pay somebody. There's a lot of organizations that the Arizona Cardinals gets rid of talent when it's like, oh, like they're obviously not competing this year, right? right? Like they do it on purpose. Their, their team's competing, the people on the field, like they're trying hard and they're actually more dangerous than the record comes off. But the organization continually sends out good players right. because they were trying to tank. Yeah. And right now we're not, but there will be a day, unfortunately, where Pete Carroll and John Schneider are no longer in this organization. So enjoy this while it lasts, because organizations aren't always run this well. They're not. There are a few actually in football. The Ravens, the Steelers, as of recently, the Seahawks, the Patriots, who this is the first time yeah. now they're starting to... I'm just saying not forever. I know, forever, but there yeah. actually are like some organizations, the Steelers, for example, mm-hmm. like... Like for forty years straight, True. just like are always relevant, and maybe, maybe I'm just saying, maybe one day. But we're also what's crazy about the Seahawks. Last thing I'll say, it's kind of unrelated, because you mentioned appreciate them while they're here. We are going to in the next, let's say five to ten years, have a new coach, a new GM, probably, and new owner. Right. So that's why the like, owner yeah, too. Don't the forget owner that. Is very, very important. So, but uh, luckily in Seattle, there's a lot of people with a lot of money. So maybe we get someone like Jeff Bezos, maybe someone. Jeff Bozo. But I don't care. Bozo, Bezos. He has no the most football. money. I don't care. He's <laughs> going to bring in the right people to run the football I team. I against Jeff, Jeff Bezos. I just really wanted to say Jeff Bozos. Nice. I thought it was funny. It is. He's much, he's much smarter than me, obviously. Jeff Bozo, make sure you pay Jake Bobo. I don't know if we should pay Jake Bobo that much, I but know. I like him on the team. That's my guy. I like Jake Bobo. All right, quickly, let's just talk about week eight against yep. the Browns. Um, we were unexpectedly doing this YouTube video slash podcast, wherever you're listening. But we might as well just add a little snippet here about week eight. Yeah, week eight. Throwback jerseys, first of all. You have a throwback hat on. I you got a throwback on. hat on. Correct. It is um, – let's just start there for one minute. I just want one minute. We don't have to waste too much time on that. But – there, there's a lot of people that are split on the idea. Everyone, I feel like everyone loves the throwback uniforms that mm-hmm. we're wearing this week, the logos, the colors, right. the silver helmets. But there's a lot of people that are split about which are better, like right now, the currents or the throwbacks. I don't just say this because like this is not like a right now thing for me after seeing the jerseys. I've felt this for a long time. I still think the Seahawks should have these colors, mm-hmm. the silver helmets, the this type of blue and that type of green. I think those... I know the silver helmets, Cowboys and, and Raiders, but other te- everyone has the helmets that are the similar colors. I think the Seahawks, these should be their colors in jerseys. Uh, I totally, totally, totally agree. Um, I'm usually not, you know me, I'm not usually like, oh, yeah, man, the older ones are always better. Like the Mariners' new stuff, I yeah. think, is perfect. You uh, don't love the Seahawks' current jerseys, great. I don't love the Seahawks' current They're better than the Matt Hasselbeck, Sean Alexander Seahawks yeah, jerseys. Those are the worst ever. <laughs> but, Maybe any football team. But but no, I, I don't love the current jerseys. I, I They're okay. I think they're like, if there was 30, there, there are 30 teams in the NFL, it's probably like the 15th 
best jersey in the NFL. Yeah, it's not bad. No. Uh, I think the thing with our current jerseys is there's certain color combos that go really well together when they do like, you know, like the... I love the green ones, actually. I know a lot of people hate on them. Or when they do like the... Uh, 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 blue pants, white top. I think it looks good. The I'm wolf just, grays are sick. That's yeah. the only ones I like. I, I just don't think they look good when they're full blue. Yeah, which is your like home jersey usually. So that's my issue. I like the whites actually and the grays in the action green. Mm-hmm. I actually don't like the full blue, which is supposed to be your home jersey, which should be your most. Which like these Kirsten. colors yeah. make would make it the best jersey. So totally, we're on the same page. Okay, well here's the thing, George. Couple of things. PJ Walker is in at quarterback, uh, because Deshaun Watson is ruled out already. He's hurt. There's some good and bad sides to that. PJ Walker's stats have actually been pretty bad, but he has won two games for the he Browns. Has, yeah. Um, and on the flip side, these are just the two topics I'm thinking about to start. Is PJ Walker's in? And on the flip side, on our side, Geno Smith has not been playing the best football that he's has as a Seahawk so far. And the offensive line has not been very good. I think our pass-blocking offensive line, I saw this on PFF today, was ranked 22nd in the NFL. The Browns' pass rush is number one in the NFL. Right. So this is going to be a very interesting game with a backup quarterback and on top of that, us having a top bottom 10 (laughs) pass-blocking offensive line and they have the number one pass rush. Those are the two takeaways I'm taking so far. I think there's going to be some not the best quarterback play on both sides. It might be a low scoring. Yeah, game. which is kind of weird because last week, I mean, Gardner Minshew and the Colts put up, what, 30-something points on this Browns defense. That's really, really good. Um, but in general, I guess they just came off playing the 49ers, which usually teams coming off playing the 49ers are usually beat up and not feeling like the absolute best. I don't know, man. Uh, I have mixed feelings about this game. I originally thought like I kind of wish Deshaun Watson was playing. I, I think right uh, injured Deshaun Watson has just not been very good. He's not been good in general. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, make very, very mixed feelings about this game. I do lean a Seahawks win. I do, but I actually think this game is a little bit trickier than it looks on surface level. It feels a little trappy like the Rams game. Yeah. You know what I'm but, saying? But, like, I, but also, we play the Ravens the week after that, right? I believe so, yes. Or is it the two weeks after that? Because the Ravens game, that one is like the one I'm going to chalk off like the Bengals game. So if I don't, I don't see us losing two games in a row here. That's like part of my reason where I think we just – it's going to be an ugly one, just like the Cardinals game was an ugly one. Um, and, I, and the Bengals game was an ugly one, another ugly – Ugly game, but I think the Seahawks win it 17 to 13. They are three and a half point favorites. So if you think they're going to win 17 13, yeah, that's about the Seahawks. Yeah, (laughs) that's about exactly right. Um, I said today 21 17, I think, on my Twitter. Uh, There's always some scores. You know, I don't think it's going to be that disgusting of a game because things happen. True. Um, But there'll be some points. P.J. Walker is going to struggle on the road in Seattle, but I think Gino might struggle a little bit again. And I know people are going to just keep hating on Gino. If we win the games, like, let's just keep riding this out. Right. Our last season, we see what it is. Like, he's not the problem, and that's what's important. The problem is Miles Garrett is going to be playing against this offensive line. Correct. But <laughs> as long as we can find a way to win, that's why I'm saying I know. right now we have a beat-up offensive line. If we can get through this game against the number one pass rush in the NFL – that's a very good sign, and we can just – I don't care how Gino plays. I don't, it's like last week. I don't give a shit what his stats were. I don't give a shit what anyone's stats were. We won the game. We came in, We came out with like a clean win, right, not like a game-winning field goal mm-hmm. last second. We came out with the win, and I want to get that again. At the end of the day, I'm just – I'm looking week to week right now because, um, like you said, Ravens are next, Commanders, Rams, 49ers, Cowboys. 49ers Eagles there's a lot of fucked up games coming up so we have to win a game like this at home against the Browns who are, we should be better than just win that's all I guess that's okay. that's like my thing is you just gotta win I it's it's gonna be messy but we have to win yeah yeah I, I totally agree and check this out George I did they just posted a tease of what the field's gonna look like all right like come on man like this should be a permanent. Let's see. For the YouTube listeners, they are actually going to they're doing all the 
siding of the like stadium and the old stuff, the end zones and the logo in the middle. It's gonna be like sweet. why would you have like you see all the fans getting so excited for why would you put a worse product on the field on purpose? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's a good question. Like, it's, like, uh, it's like NBA teams now. Like yeah. like people like the Rockets and the and the Orlando Magic, like the old stuff's obviously better. Well, the Magic went back to the old stuff now, basically. Sort of, not, not sort of, always. not like, always. Yeah, yeah. Same with the Rockets, but they're doing them as like the only team that's actually done it because they got a new innovative owner is the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, they made it more modernized, but they did the Big Sun again. The Rockets can do the big thing, or like you know, sometimes in NFL, if you look at some of the best jerseys, and we're back to the jerseys, but fuck it. Yeah. The best, some of the best jerseys in the NFL. Here, let's see. We'll go one by one. See if we have the same ones. Tell me if you disagree with well, any of them. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna tell you. I, I don't. I don't have a ranking. I was just no, gonna I'm say not gonna like rank. I was Cowboys, just... Lions, Steelers, Packers, Raiders. These are all teams yeah. that never changed their jerseys. Chiefs yeah. never changed their jerseys. Yeah, that's a, those are the ones I was gonna say. I was seeing if we had the same uh, those six. thoughts. Yeah, those are about the six best jerseys in the NFL. Like Chiefs, Lions never changed, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Steelers never change. Cowboys, Raiders never change. Yeah. Green Bay never changes. The Rams never really change. Well, they, they, they change the color scheme. It's still like that Ram thing. But, yeah, but like if they didn't, if they kept the original color scheme, they would be up there. I think their new one's better actually. Really, I like the, the brown first. And yeah. Like blue is kind of a little too browny instead of gold. But like the point is, a lot of the best classic jerseys except have the never Browns really changed. I like the brown jerseys. I know you do. I don't. I think it's classic. Yeah. Classic's nice sometimes. Sometimes. And I said most of the time. It's just not the Browns. They don't have that much going on. All right. Seahawks win, but a sloppy one, right? Yeah, yeah. A sloppy yeah. win. All right. Well, Frank Clark, Seahawks are going to win. We did it all. We said five minutes. It's been 21. So <laughs> yeah, it worked. The usual. It turned into a podcast. That's love good. it. All right. Much love. Make sure you check us out everywhere at Seattle on Tap. And uh, you can check our website, merch, everything at sportsontapseattle.com. Sportsontapseattle.com. I'm Sammy. And I'm George. And uh, we'll be back next time. George, you know what we like to say? Hey, thanks for stopping by.